This episode of the After Action Review Podcast is brought to you by the Java Can, an all-in-one ruggedized coffee brewing system designed by a green beret so that you can make a fresh cup of coffee anywhere from your backyard to a mountaintop in Afghanistan. The Java Can will brew you and your team a fresh cup of coffee no matter where life takes you. Go to thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, and get 10% off your purchase. That's thejavacan.com, use promo code AAR, get your 10% off. Live life charged. And welcome to the After Action Review. I'm Rod Rodriguez. Now, the coolest thing about doing this podcast is getting to meet the people behind the content. You know, videos, podcasts, and audio clips are great. But remember, that's what people want you to know and see. Now, have you heard me talk about Gary Vee, whom I think has set a whole new standard when it comes to personal slash professional content creation. But I have to remind myself, that's what he wants me to see. That's what he wants me to hear. You can preach up and down. That, you know, what you see is what you get. Maybe that's true. But there isn't really a way to know for sure until you meet that person, until you get to know them a bit. Now, Matt Zappala is a lot like that. He's all over Facebook and Instagram. He's the money smart guy. That's the brand, and the brand is him. The name of his game is PHP Agency. The PHP stands for People Helping People. Based out of Dallas, Texas, PHP is a life insurance company led by its founder, Patrick Bet David. On the PHP website, you'll find a quote by Bet David saying, quote, we're going to make it cool to be a life insurance agent. Now, I'm not sure about that. Um, I'm still not at a point where I feel like a life insurance agent is necessarily cool, but I will tell you, I, I will give uh, PHP and I will give Matt Zappola this. Getting to know Matt, I can see how he is making it cool to be a life insurance agent. Matt is an executive vice president in the PHP agency who encourages people potential insurance agents to adopt an entrepreneur strategy towards their success in PHP. His message of financial responsibility will often be accompanied by his own personal story of leaving the Marine Corps with barely a strategy in mind for success and how he's gone from barely making ends meet to traveling around the country promoting PHP and helping salespeople become more successful in their industry. Now, before we jump in, I want to recognize a few things. Now, I'm not the kind of person that sticks their head in the sand and pretends like all the negative stuff doesn't exist. I'm well aware of the criticism PHP has received, and I get where some of those comments are coming from. But this episode isn't about promoting PHP. I'm not a member, nor do I endorse or sell their products. I will say that, like all things in life, buyer beware. Do your due diligence, ask questions, and make a decision based on what you've learned, not just what you read online. But also, don't just dismiss what's online. Put it all in your equation of what you're comfortable with and go with that. So what is this episode about? It's about Matt Zappala. Not the money smart guy. But about the former Marine with an incredible story of patience, perseverance, and success. I met Matt about a year ago and he's always been gracious enough to talk to me, offer me advice that had nothing to do with life insurance or business in general and has been open and forthcoming with everything I've ever asked. He's an entrepreneur in his own right because his success depends on his own efforts. So I wanted to share his story with you, not in hopes that you become a life insurance agent. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I hope that you'll be inspired to move in a direction of intrapreneurship or entrepreneurship. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Zappal. So Matt Zappala, United States Marine Corps, door gunner, CH-46 battle frog, baby. Wow. You're still pumped up about that. And what do you do do now? So I am an entrepreneur in the insurance industry, and the name of our company is called PHP Agency. We're in 49 different states, including Puerto Rico. And we have uh, Ashka De La Hoya as an investor in our company through a Series A uh, round of financing last August. And we're on 11 quarters in a row beating our last quarter. 
in the next few weeks, we got Kevin Hart on our, our platform in Las Vegas, and we're just very fired up about disrupting the insurance industry. So I'll be honest with you. When I think entrepreneurship, insurance isn't the first thing that comes to mind. Tell me why I'm wrong. Well, I don't think the industry has done a good job of promoting entrepreneurship with inside its space. So, for example, one of the things that we'll never get people to do, this is what my CEO, our CEO just sent a recent interview, we'll never get Americans because God created such a great thing called sex. Americans will never stop having, or human beings will never stop having sex. But guess what the insurance industry has done for the last 40 years? Oh, please connect this for me. They stopped having sex. Why? Because the average agent in our field is a 59-year-old Caucasian male. Oh, okay. So imagine having a Marine Corps or an Army or, mm -hmm. a, or a battle force where all it is is just generals. Mm -hmm. No captains. Mm -hmm. No sergeant majors. No first sergeant. No gunnies. No sergeants. No NCOs. No privates. That has been eliminated because of the lack of being able to pass on a torch inside the insurance industry. Therein lies the blue ocean strategy. So the PHP, tell me a little bit about what PHP is, and then that's going to kind of tie into kind of what, what my question is in terms of like entrepreneurship and, and insurance. But tell me a little bit about PHP. So PHP agencies was conceptualized in October of 2009, in the middle of the recession. Same year that Airbnb was started, same year that Uber was started. Why? Because those companies gave people an opportunity to make extra money, especially in a time in our country where people are looking for more money because they're losing jobs, losing money in their savings or 401k. So when PHP Agency, which stands for People Helping People, our CEO uh, left a company called Transamerica World Financial Group um, because of a lot of lack of, lacking of entrepreneur opportunity. Okay, and when you're part of a large conglomerate like that, it's hard to turn the battleship versus mm -hmm. being a speedboat. And so we wanted a platform where people can have an opportunity to go in business for themselves. And they're the ones being able to call the shots, not a corporate culture, not having corporate governance. And sadly, this is what has happened inside the insurance industry over the last 30, 40, 50 years. It's just a lot of good old boys club, a lot of, um, uh, you, you know, you got to have access. Listen, dude, I'm not about having that type of access. If I do the work, I get paid. If I do the work, I get access. I don't care who your brother-in-law is. Mm -hmm. I don't care who your uncle is. I don't care who somebody's been paying dues to for the last 30, 45 years. If I come on brand new, and this is a world of free enterprise and capitalism, I do the work, I get paid. And that's what PHP is, is sharing to the mission of the world. Is Even though we're an insurance marketing organization, that's what we are. We offer 32 different insurance companies. We do life insurance. We do retirement services through a licensed agent field force. I mean, here in Virginia, we're just, you're here in our office, our new office here in Manassas, Virginia. We're launching a new office. I recruited Leonard from another financial firm to launch our office here inside the insurance in industry. It's got a bunch of young, hungry entrepreneurs in that room, all from various careers and diverse backgrounds, socioeconomic upbringings. It doesn't matter because the insurance industry has said, well, we require six, seven, eight, eight interviews before you become on before you come on board. Mm -hmm. For us, listen, at the end of the day, if you can't do the work, you ain't coming on board anyway. So right. we give the opportunity for people to say, listen, get your license, here are the things you need to do. We allow people to come on board on a part-time basis. Why? Because it's our tryout for them too as well, as well as them trying us out. I want to see how well you work under pressure. I want to see how well you work on the phones. I want to see how well you work in front of your people, in public speaking, et cetera. If you can do that, and you got a you got a spot to. How does this do differ? Well how does how does working with PHP differ from having a job? Well, here there's no requirement to be here. Everybody is an independent contractor, uh, so they're responsible for for their own marketing. They have to. Yeah, it's all on you. Yeah. So, but here in terms of marketing, here's business development. Here's how you market yourself. Here's how you hire your own internal staff to support you, so you keep the main thing the main thing. Here's our blueprint to help you run that. So we've got a model. We've got a blueprint to help people go from A to Z in terms of running this business, support it through weekly conference calls, support it through, through visits, like myself here in Virginia, mm -hmm. where, whereas I'm based in Chicago. So that's how we get people from scratch to success. So one of the things I've seen that you've been very successful in is making insurance interesting. Yeah. You know, I see your videos, you're all over Facebook, you're all over Instagram, you're very good at putting your message out there. Thank you. Um, 
where did you pick this up from? What is what is your strategy behind um, your? And I had, I'm not saying you're self promoter, but you are definitely a self promoter. Um, where, if where's she'll promote you? Who's going to promote you? That's exactly right. Yeah. Where's this coming from? And what is your goal? Where are you where are you headed towards this? I want to make sure that I am a flag carrier for entrepreneurship. That I'm a flag carrier for the insurance industry, for the flag carrier for the veteran entrepreneur community. Go to what most veterans think. They get out, they leave the military, they think. I was just uh, yesterday at uh, Marine Corps Barracks 8th and I. Mm-hmm. We're doing an event sponsored by Miller Corps. I'm the host. In a conversation, even amongst this prestigious unit, where you're hand-selected to get to this unit, I mean, you just can't say, you know, to the Marine Corps, I want to go to Marine Corps Barracks. No, you have to go through a prestigious hand-selection process. So I want them to know, the veteran community to know, that it's more than just being a firefighter, a cop, a postal worker, construction worker, contractor. There's a lot more that you can do in the world, in the freedom that we've been fighting to defend and provide that the slice of this world of entrepreneurship can be experienced inside the insurance industry. And if you don't know how or you don't know why it's cool, I'm glad you stumbled across my videos. Because I want you to know that this is a very cool, I've been doing this for 19 years. This is a very cool industry. I've got no college degree. I don't have a four-year degree. I don't have a two-year degree. All I have is a PhD, public high school diploma, right? That's all I got, man. I had a 2.2 GPA just to play sports in high school. But somebody showed me the world of entrepreneurship. So somebody showed me the rules that the, the, the wealthy and the rich are playing by. He says, how do I adopt that for me? And once I figure that stuff out, boom. So how did you get involved in this? How did, how did Matt Sapala yeah. become the money smart guy? Because I was the money dumb guy first. And, and, and being as transparent, 1996, I filed bankruptcy in Orange County, California. What, 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 what happened? I went back to court because I got through a, through a divorce. So, so my, my financial home was completely demolished because of bad decisions. Uh, mainly because I didn't know what the rules were. I didn't know. I didn't even have the awareness. So it wasn't until I'm, I'm in a bathroom of a Best Buy off the 405 freeway, right just north of Camp Pendleton, just south of Marine Corps Station, El Toro. And I'm taking my kids to the bathroom, and a retired master sergeant comes up to me. And I know he's a retired master sergeant. I don't know he's just some older dude in the bathroom. And by the way, man rule, what do you think, Rod? If I don't know you, am I talking For to sure you? For sure, don't talk to me in the bathroom. Exactly. Yeah. So, he's <laughs> <laughs> so he starts the conversation with me. I'm like, what do you want? He, well, he's, he's, uh, hey, you like money? He's like, yeah. So he's like a lot of money? Yeah. I see that you're Marines. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell by the way you walk. Definitely not somebody you tell a guy in the bathroom. Yeah, this this story is going on a dark path. I'm, yeah. I'm waiting for the light at the end of the tunnel, Matt. Here he goes. He says, <laughs> if you like money, you like a lot of money, do you know the rules? He says, I, I'm in the Marine Corps. No, no, no. Anybody can be in the Marine Corps. Anybody can be a branch of service. Anybody can get enlisted. He says, but do you know the rules of money? He said, no, I don't. And I uh, says, well, that's why I like to exchange information. By the way, he showed me his planner, showed the Marine Corps seal sticker. Marine Corps, I was, oh, just, just like any vet, you know, there's automatic rapport there. So he, he, he followed it up with me. I kept his business card. And, and here's why I kept his business card, never called him. He says, he's in the financial world. I know nothing about finance. I know nothing about insurance. I know nothing about investments. I, right? It's intimidating to me. I don't have a college, you know, a college degree in that stuff, right? No. But he follows up with me. He runs into his old buddy on, on base. Hey, do you know this, do you know this Marine? One conversation led to another. He tracked me down, calls me up at the base. Hey, Sergeant Spall speaking. I'm going to help you, uh, ma'am or sir. Sorry, ma'am. And he says, hey, you remember me, Carlton Enlow. He says, yeah, oh, yeah. The guy I met in the bathroom of the Best Buy. You're the money guy. I am. So I'm in base housing tonight. I'm wondering if I can stop by and say hello. Yeah, no problem. Come on by. Let's grab a beer. So he breaks down what he does. He breaks down finance. I'm going, I just went through a divorce. I just went through bankruptcy uh, years ago. I said, man, I want, I want to play offense, man. I'm part, tired of this defense shit flip freaking offense he gave me the tools and that's where that's where I led so 20 years later you're here in Manassas you're opening another uh, another office down mm-hmm. here hand selected the guy to run this thing you hit on something very interesting Actually, he had selected me he, he had been, selected you he's been watching me for a year and a half videos all this stuff oh there you go yeah there you go so you hit on something very interesting you said that you know you were intimidated by finances yes I think that's a that's a very 
uh, logical, and I think it's also a very common thing. People mm-hmm. are intimidated by int- entrepreneurship. They're all intimidated by the entire process. Yep. You know, we were just talking about like the podcast setup. You know, this is the easy part. Yeah. You know, talking is easy. Yeah. But it's the other 90% of this process that is intimidating that keeps people from doing a podcast of their own. What helped you jump that hurdle? To say, it's no longer going to be this thing that's scaring the shit out of me. I'm going to fucking do this. Community. I had to plug into a community. And I think through your podcast, you are creating community, which is awesome. I mean, back in my day, we had tapes and CDs. And it was late 90s. I mean, today, these Marines, these these uh, service members in active duty today, they can just go to their iTunes or whatever, download your AR podcast and get access to community of people that want to know more, do more, and willing to have more. But to me, it was physical. For me, it was much more. It was just listening to a podcast. It was physically plugging into a community. Like today, we're shaking. I've, I've known you over the what, a year and a half About or something. About a year, yeah. First time I'm shaking your hand, which is awesome. And it's not like I have to figure you out. I've, I've kind of got to know you already, right? That is what allowed me to start transforming. That is what allowed me to start changing, is plugging into human bodies because money is energy, and I can fa- feel energy when I'm around people. It's like, like I made an analogy in, in my workshop this morning. If somebody said, uh, this uh, uh, point to a young lady, if somebody said you're getting dropped into Panama, right? And, and, and uh, you had to live and breathe Spanish, right? You think after 30 days, you start picking up the language because you had to survive in Spanish? She goes, yeah. She says, can I ask you a question? He goes, did you take Spanish in high school? She goes, uh-huh. How many years? Three years. For how many, for how many, how many uh, times a day? She goes, one hour a day. Three years in Spanish? One hour a day? Do you speak Spanish? Goes, no. See, that's it. Mm-hmm. There is no learning unless you're immersed. And I got immersed into a community of entrepreneur-minded thinking people. And that's today where PHP Agency thrives because we create that environment. We have meetings twice a week. It's almost like church. You know, people go to their spiritual church. Well, well we have a financial church, I guess. You know, people plugging in on, on Tuesdays and Saturdays because I want people living and breathing and understanding this language. It's not that intimidating once you get around people who are actually doing it. And oh, by the way, here they're creating results. They're leaving their job. They're firing their boss. They're paying off their debt. They're saving money. They're making 10000 about 20000 I just had a young lady, to, she started with me, started taking this business seriously last August. She's making $15,000 a month right now, starting from, starting from nothing. She was a nurse with five responsibilities. And I said, here's the sixth responsibility. She goes, okay, she's starting typing up her, res- her resignation letter because she has us in her back pocket, right? And it, sadly, they beat her to the punch. They lay her off. Right, the cutbacks. Mm-hmm. But she started making eight, nine, ten thousand dollars a month already. She goes, I'm the happiest person in the whole entire company getting laid off because she started working on a plan B. Or actually, she started working on a plan A while she was working on a plan B. Her job became her plan B. So, where do people mess up? Where, you know, being the money smart guy, where are we money dumb? Is number one is getting access to things that will educate you, number one, and then number two, following through with it. Why, how do I know that? There's a lot of highly educated broke people I ran into. How do I know? The guy was dri- driving an Uber today. What do you have? College degree, master's degree. Uh, all, all day in, in D.C., uh, taking cabs. Highly educated people that thought that the typical college education would get them financial success. I think you and I had a conversation, too. Yeah. You were the type of guy that says, you know, let me, let me down you on, on, on a business, get, get a degree. And here you are, you got an AAR podcast talking about entrepreneurship. Because you've been aware about well, what's possible. So you've been turned around to, to an extent. And so that's, that's what makes the mistakes happen is when people gather information, gather information, gather information, information and no execution. You know, what, what did Patton say during World War II? Is an is a, a, is a imperfect plan violently executed today is much more effective than a perfect plan executed 30 days from now. Why? Because the, the enemy has moved. For us... The procrastination excuses will continue to surround us and beat us up if we don't move, if we don't execute. I'd rather go out there and fail. Because unlike the military, where it costs millions of dollars of equipment or worse, lives when you make a mistake, in business is not so much, especially when you start small. You're not making a lot of mistakes. You're making, okay, so what? Somebody hung up on you. Oh, so what? You, you got the door slammed on you. Oh, so what? Somebody said no to you. you know, that, those are small areas of failure that doesn't cost you. You might not get money. Right, but you can still get up the next day and make some more calls, or go to more boardrooms, or knock on more doors. It's not like the military where, you know, you know, you're gonna lose rank. That's right. You know, the 
the world of entrepreneurship is not necessarily as unforgiving as some people make it out to be. You're right. You're going to get no's. You're going to get door shut. It doesn't really matter if you're selling insurance or if you're selling your your uh, XYZ widget. It doesn't yep. matter what industry it's in. Nobody's going to go in there and score home runs right away. How does PHP help their people score those home runs? We allow first off 80%, 90% of our guys, like the majority of the people that's in here in, in this in this office, are going to start off part-time. So l- let's, uh, let's, let's give you some OJT. Mm-hmm. Right? Here's OJT. Let me help you make your first phone calls. Let me help you get in the field with our licensed uh, trainers. Our licensed agent's going to show you this field. You're going to learn how to see how to do a boardroom presentation. You're going to learn how to deal with a client in, in a house, in their office. You're going to learn how to ask for referrals. So, and you're you going to start seeing this ain't so hard after So they hold your hand a little bit yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, 100%. Until you say, okay, I can do this by myself. I made two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 along the way. And as you're learning, you're earning. And as you're earning, the confidence goes higher. So teaching the basic skill sets increases confidence. When you can increase confidence, it'll increase action. When you increase action, it'll create results. Rinse, repeat. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Now, for, from the entrepreneurship standpoint, what is your advice to somebody who's maybe in the entrepreneur in the world of entrepreneurship, but they're not necessarily in the PHP uh, domain? Ecosystem, yeah. What, what, what's your advice to them? What do you? What wisdom do you have to to somebody who's not in your particular industry? Yeah, one one question I ask entrepreneurs all the time: What do you want out of life, man? What is your life going to look like? You're going to do another 20, 30, 40, you know, Lord willing, of your life. You look back in 60, you look back in 70, you look back in your life, what does your life look like? Like your son's here today. This is awesome, you know, because you're field training your son. You're teaching your son a craft. You're teaching him a language. You're immersing him around people. He's around a millionaire right now. I don't know if he even knows that. He's, he's around a guy that made $115,000 the last 30 days. And his dad has access to him. I never had that when I was growing up. You know what access I had to? The bus driver. Not that it wasn't an honorable profession, but you know what the bus driver is going to tell me for the rest of my life? Come get a, come get a job with me. I asked in a workshop, what did your family tell you about getting wealthy? What did your family tell you about being fi- financially independent? I could be a foreman. You know, I can be in the union. Da, 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 da. By the way, that's the neighborhood I grew up in. When I go to the, the, now that we live on the other side of the tracks, you know my kids are learning now because they're around a different set of kids? How, how to make an impact in D.C.? Mm-hmm. What type of scholarships can I get? How can I, impact can I make with my website, my YouTube channel? Because I've had the resources to actually do that. It's a different kind of story. It's not a survivor mentality anymore. It's, it's a, an abundance mentality. And really, that's what we are in a country of, of abundance. So when, when, when we're looking at your life, what do you want to accomplish out of your life? And the second thing is, what type of vehicle are you going to be riding in? Are you going to walk there, take the bike, take the bus, train, fly? What vehicle are you going to use to get there? The third thing was, what type of, what type of platform are you going to use? Are you going to use a franchise? Are you going to use a model where you, where you figure it out yourself? Are you going to have access to a mentor? What platform are you going to use? Who's going to teach you? These type of things. Who's going to help you avoid mistakes that you probably would have made, uh, but because of their mentorship, it saved you time and money. Who's going to accelerate your learning curve, and the learning curve becomes a success for success curve becomes a power curve. Who's going to help you do that? And that that would be the basic tenets of of entrepreneurs. I think the reason why people are entrepreneurs is obviously the impact they're making in, in the community. But you know, for majority of the entrepreneurs, man, I can make a lot of money at this thing. And I can use that money to fund and finance the other aspirations that I have in my life. Some kid, I asked a kid today, so why are you at a workshop? Uh, I don't know. My sister invited me because my sister wants to hire me, right? Cool, no problem. So I just asked him, I just out of curiosity, uh, if you're going to do something, why would you do it? He goes, because I want to make enough money to not have to worry about money. He goes, I said, that's awesome. That's an awesome answer. Just graduate high school. So great. My second question, have you done the math? Done the math with what? What does your lifestyle look like? Your, your, your rent, your car, right? Going out, girls, whatever. Have you mapped mm-hmm. that out? Mm-hmm. No. Well, guess what, brother? You'll never get to life. You don't have a roadmap. You, you, don't, roadmap. you don't have a goal. You don't, even, you don't know what X is. If you're going to solve for X, you don't even know what X is. So I think for the first time in, her, in his life, a figure came in because of his sister, because she wants to build this family business, mm-hmm. that the first time in his life, he may have heard it before, but now a complete stranger that he may look up to with a little bit of credibility says, man, this guy dropped a dime on me, and I bet you he's thinking about that all day today, if not for, his, if not for the rest of his life. That's powerful. You made a great point, and, and it's true. 
uh, one of the benefits to today's modern uh, access to information, and it, it's really informa- it's access to people. Yeah. You know, you can go on Instagram. It's funny because I was just uh, I was on Twitter and I was DMing back and forth with uh, Sophia Nasser, who's a astrophysicist at UCLA. Um, at going back, smart people, man, yeah, super smart people, and and just talking to different <laughs> folks on the different social media platforms you and I have conversed in, mm-hmm. in instant messages. I've asked you for advice. I've asked you for some guidance here and there. Uh, it, that's something I never would have got. My father's never had that. My mm-hmm. father didn't have it. Your father didn't. Our, mm-hmm. you know, Perfect. our family, it was like, who's the smartest guy within arm's reach? Yeah. And that's not always the smartest guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not yeah. always not the dude. The dude's in the same town with you and you're probably doing the same job. Um, if we want to learn more about PHB, we want to learn more about you, uh, how do we do that? Yeah, Money Smart Guy, Instagram, Money Smart Guy, Twitter, Money Smart Guy dot com, Instagram, the the whole thing. Why? Because people can't say or spell Matt Sapala. Hey man, I go with my first name is D Dan. D Dan. D Dan. I go by Rod because nobody can pronounce it. <laughs> they see D E D A N and it looks like a stutter. Like D Dan. It's terrible. <laughs> you were bullied. You're, you're oh bullied. my Dad god. Was bullied. <laughs> I hate my first name. Hate it with passion. Thanks, mom and dad. Yeah. So the Money Smart Guy. Matt Zapala, check it out. And you know, the thing is with this show, we talk about entrepreneurship. I'm open to entrepreneurship of any level. Uh, I'm not looking for people who are just doing, uh, like I have XYZ widget, you know, I'm inventing things mm-hmm. and that's cool too, but franchise is also an important yes. aspect of entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you're doing here with independent contracting, I'm an independent contractor right. at work. Right. You know, in my nine to five, I'm a contractor. I'm responsible for making sure that my stuff is airtight. And yeah. uh, although I'm not, I don't, in my line of work, we don't necessarily have to be on Instagram talking about like, you know, hey, I'm working secret squirrel stuff, whatever, uh, even though I wish it was that cool. <sighs> you definitely can't do that, but you do have to promote yourself. You do have to really be aware of who you are and what you're doing. And I think that's a lesson that anybody in the entrepreneurship field needs is to, especially out here, you yeah. need to know how to use your Instagram, yeah. your Twitter, your Facebook, and I see you using it all the time. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just telling a story because when I see other influencers, I just I'm just modeling their positive, their positive message. Like if I see something that that uh, an influencer got my attention, I was like, how do I do that? Mm-hmm. Like yesterday, I was at Marine Barracks Eighth and I. They just used their terminology using a scene from uh, Top Gun. But using the context of their language, they're doing some stupid, uh, what do you call those, lip syncs type of things. Yeah. So they did some lip syncs using Top Top Gun, and that's funny. I'm like, you, man, for a Marine Corps officer, that was actually pretty funny. Yeah. Not bad. And and I'm looking at things that get people's attention because today, I, if, if I can get your attention, that's how I rise above the noise is because inside the insurance world, people think old, boring, stodgy, mahogany desk, you know, suit, tie. They don't, they don't think... Kevin Hart. They don't think Oscar De La Hoya. They don't think our faces. They don't, right? They don't think uh, Lamborghinis and Ferraris and that we're, we're driving around. We, we want to make it fun because uh, it's a fun industry to be a part of. One thing I do want to touch on in your Instagram and your social media contact, content, um, I love the fact how often you bring your family into it. It is, uh, it's not, it, it, I think what, what I makes that. you different is it's not Matt next to some badass cars sure. and uh, a, a plane. You're not sitting in the garage like talking about like, you know what I, <laughs> you know what I really value is <laughs> not this Lamborghini, but it's these books. And you're not, you're not doing this nonsense. It's like, hey, here's me and my family, my kid and my wife. And we're, we're she's part of the process. Yeah. She's in the business. The two of you, it's, it's a partnership. And yes. you can see that it comes through oh, in your social media. Great feedback. Thank you. And My wife is gonna love hearing that. I, I, I'm ho- I'm glad she will because it, it's important yeah. that, and this is something I, I've been telling entrepreneurs is you know, and you have to make your wife, your spouse, mm-hmm. your significant other, they have to be your personal mm-hmm. VP. They have to be that person who, without them, mm-hmm. you got nothing. They, yeah. Without their support, you're not gonna go very you, far. Yeah, you know, I, I got a voicemail uh, from a guy. He's a very influential doctor in uh, Chicago. Just got divorced. He's fifty some years old. Anyway, he, he's calling me. He said, you know what? Uh, I'm inviting to this party. Celebrities are going to be here in Chicago. We're going, to play, we're going to play in the playground, which is on Lake Michigan on everybody's yachts. We call it the playground. I says, yeah, and, you know, some, some girls are going to be here too. And I just want to let you know, man, if you're thinking about bringing her, don't bring your wife. 
I said, I said uh, uh, what, what made you think that you can ever invite me to something like that? What made you think that I could, you can put me in a situation? I'm talking about environment. You think that environment is going to help me build my business or tear apart my business? Just because things didn't work out with your marriage doesn't mean you take me down with you. Mm-hmm. I don't care how a successful doctor you are or what a type of account you give me. That, it's not worth it for me to violate why I'm doing what I'm doing, which is my wife, which is my children, which is our, you know, our legacy. Your life. That's yeah. your life. That's it right there. I mean, if, what's the point of doing all this if you can't share it a with somebody A moment of selfishness. Yeah. That's it. That's all it takes. Just one moment. And not you know what? It. Speaking of moments, take a moment Guys, gals, ladies and gentlemen, take a moment. Go check out The Money Smart Guy. Just Google The Money Smart Guy. You're (laughs) going to see his face all over the place. You're going to see him jet setting with the family. Uh, You're going to see him working hard. And I think one of the coolest things also is the motivation. I see you out there. You're not just about you, you, you. It's about motivating your folks. I think the first time you and I actually did a video chat, you were in an office with all your people and they were out there. They were fired up. They were motivated. And they were insurance, excited. Right? And it was insurance. I was like, I didn't even know what this was. And I was like, yo, what uh, is this a guy running a cult? Yeah, right, right. I was like, is he yeah. a preacher? Because like these people are super stoked about what you're doing. So uh, whatever you're doing, Matt, keep doing it. We're all interested in what the secret sauce is. I'm sure everyone's going to jump into your uh, your stream and start start absorbing all this content that you're putting out there. It's really good information, man. I'm, dude, I'm, I'm honored to be on your show. I've seen you grow your podcast from, I think, over like the first several podcasts. Yeah. And the thing, too, is you stuck with it. Most guys wouldn't stick with it. It's been a year, year and a half, and guys have tried it. I think, I think the biggest mistake when people gain that knowledge is they don't stay consistent with it. My mentor, Patrick Ben David, he started a channel with YouTube called Valuetainment. He had like 2,000, 3,000 subscribers after like six years. But boom, he did one video, exploded, got him. To, right now, uh, he's at uh, 795,000 subscribers. Um, you got people asking him questions. It's, it's a big uh, awareness that, hey, Patrick, our CEO, has the number one channel on YouTube for entrepreneurs. If you punch an entrepreneur on YouTube, boom, value team comes up. I think the yeah. first eight uh, I've, I've, I've seen him. Yeah. He's floating around. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm excited about this podcast. We've been doing really good for the last two years. Uh, lately, I've been trying to uh, uh, bug Gary Vaynerchuk because I'm, I'm into his I'm into the I'm into the word. I'm kind of I've, I've drank the Kool-Aid. I got you. I'm enjoying it. And, uh, you know, I keep telling him like I keep throwing out there on Twitter. I'm like, hey, I'll pro- I'll do some free podcast work for one of your one of your clients, one of your shows. Why not? I mean, the worst is going to happen. I suck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> best thing, best case scenario, I'm fantastic. And uh, you got some free work. And I got some little 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 exposure, a little foot in the door. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that, That's right? That's it, yeah. All right, Matt, thanks again for taking time out of your event sure. here in Virginia. Manassas. Uh, Manassas. Yeah. Boy, this for is- For the a, first time here, man. For, it's not yeah. a bad name. You got to spend some time in D.C.? You got to do some sightseeing? I do, of course. And if uh, people check out my vlog, Living Money Smart, They'll see uh, the five Marine Corps lessons, uh, that, 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 that the biggest lessons I got out of the Marine Corps that any entrepreneur can use. That vlog is going on Sunday. Our vlogs go out Sunday morning, 8 a.m. There you go. And you'll see the sightseeing and touring that we did through Washington, D.C. That's fantastic. So, folks, uh, all of these links are going to be in the show notes. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, they're going to be in the show notes. You're going to be able to go and check them all out. Make sure you like, listen, and subscribe to this channel, his channel, and to everyone else's channel that's on the AAR podcast. And I hear a lot of people like, oh, I support veteran entrepreneurs. I support veteran business. Like, prove it. Prove it. Okay, you don't want to buy the XYZ bit widget. You don't need insurance. That's cool. I get it. But you can subscribe, support these veterans and their businesses by liking, listening, subscribing, sharing, and just doing that that little, that little simple button press can make a big difference. Yeah, when people say thank you for your service, great. Subscribe to our podcast, There you right? go. <laughs> Boom. All right, folks, that does it for us. Thanks again, Matt. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate being here. All right, folks, that was Matt's Paula. Fascinating story for sure. Folks, don't forget to like, listen, subscribe, and share this podcast. Support Veteran Business. By supporting the leading podcast in veteran business, it's this one, folks, the After Action Review. And of course, don't forget about our sponsors and affiliates for the love of God. Don't forget about them. Check out the Java Can, an all-in-one ruggedized coffee brewing system designed by former Green Beret. Actually, I keep saying former, and I want to correct this because he's not a former Green Beret. The man is still a Green Beret. He's actually out there. He's a uh, he's a senior non-commissioned officer. He's out there 
killing the game and killing bad guys. So you can brew the freshest cup of coffee anywhere life takes you. Go to thejavacan.com, use coupon code AAR at checkout and get 10% off your purchase. That's coupon code AAR at checkout. Get 10% off your purchase. Live life charged. We're also an affiliate of Onnit, O-N-N-I-T dot com. I'm a huge fan of Alpha Brain, folks. It's been clinically proven to enhance memory and focus using nothing but all natural ingredients and no stimulants. In fact, the only reason I remember that whole thing about the Java Candy is because I'm on Alpha Brain right now. I can feel the difference, and so will you. When you try Alpha Brain, go to O-N-N-I-T dot com. Use coupon code AAR at checkout, and you're going to save yourself 10% off your purchase. That's O-N-N-I-T dot com, coupon code AAR, 10% off your purchase. Your business is worth it. So that does it for me, folks. That does it for me. I had a great time talking to Massa Paul. I want to thank him again. Um, folks, if you want to reach out to him, all the links are in the show notes, and I will see you at the next episode.